Hello friends, welcome back to another episode in Microsoft Flight Simulator. We are with the Phoenix A320 and we will be taking her for a full flight tutorial from Dublin to Manchester like we did with the 146 Professional. I'm not going to do a full review of the textures and exterior modeling, but what I would say is the Phoenix app running in the background is not quite optimized and it's using a lot of CPU power and CPU utilization. So be aware of that. I have to drop my settings down to high end with a 3070 Ti to be able to record uh, the video and also to be able to fly in the simulator without stutters. Just know that guys. And if you stumbled upon this video and not a channel subscriber, I would appreciate if you take a couple seconds to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button and turn the notifications to that get notified for future videos. It helps a lot and I appreciate everybody's support uh, who has helped me to get to this point in my journey. Thank you very much. Without further ado, let's jump into the cockpit and let's get, let's get the aircraft started to the cockpit of the Phoenix A320. We are in a Colgan Lux state and we'll start with the EFB and start loading our aircraft and then do the Colgan Lux startup procedure. Let's go to the Phoenix app and pull our flight plan from Simbrief. We have 34 minutes until our departure and if we are late, we have to send an information to our dispatch using our MCDU, but we will talk about that when the time comes. If we are on time, we might not be able to do or show this. Next thing I'd like to do here is to start loading the aircraft because it will take some time. As you see, it takes 25 minutes. That's fine. We'll do real time and the aircraft will start or the ground crews will start loading the aircraft and the passengers will start boarding. All right, let's and as we see here they are now boarding and we'll pull the pilot briefing from Simbrief as well to have it ready when we are working with the MCDU here in a little bit all right that's our operational flight plan and we are now going to start working our way with the cold and dark startup right prior to powering up the aircraft we are going to check couple things in the cockpit to make sure they are in the off positions and they will not do funny things when we power the aircraft on. First thing is the weather radar needs to be in the off position, predict the wind shear needs to be off, engine uh, ignition switches needs to be in the off position and the ignition selector needs to be in the middle position which is normal position. Speed brakes are stowed, flaps are retracted, landing gear manual extension handle is secure and Wipers are in the off position because we don't want the wipers to turn on. They might scratch the glass in real life. I don't know if it's simulated with Phoenix because a lot of things are simulated with this aircraft. Next thing, we'll check the battery voltage. Maybe move to this view. It is better for you guys. We have to have more than 25 volts and then we can turn on the battery power. Battery 1, battery 2 on and this will provide power to various aircraft systems that uses DC power. Next thing is to turn on our nav lights to system 1, arm the emergency exit lights and we'll turn on the crew oxygen supply. If you don't turn this on, let me show you, let me turn this off very shortly. You have the oxygen masks below here, you won't be able to perform the test if the crew oxygen supply is turned off. But when you turn it on you can perform the mask test. There we go. Now it is working. So that's that's all about that. We'll turn on the ground uh, control for the cockpit voice recorder. And this is pretty much what we need to do to get the external power connected to the aircraft. Let's turn the external power on. This will provide power to the aircraft's AC systems and while we are here we will just turn the adir switches to NAV. Oh by the way uh, the evacuation switch needs to be at the captain and purse position. Adir switches 1, 
2 and 3 systems are turned on now system 1 system 2 and system 3 is in the middle it is going to start aligning the aircraft's position and we should see the uh, message here when the systems finish their self tests flight warning computer 1 2 fault this will display here until the system boots up and you will see a couple things and clicks and that message should disappear when it's done there you go that triple click was the flight warning system so now we can perform the tests APU fire test we are hearing the bell master caution and APU fire on the ECAN that checks engine 1 fire test master warning engine 1 fire and fire warning at the pedestal master warning engine fire and fire in the pedestal all tests check out we test the lights as well while we are here to make sure none of the bulbs are uh, exploded or they are all working to make sure which they are and we will put this back to dim you can also check the circuit breakers it might be uh, wise to do it in this aircraft because of the simulated systems and circuit breakers being modeled so we try to position ourselves right here and take a look at the circuit breakers to see if there are anything that's popped and showing a white ring let me find one that's modeled you will see what i mean by that if i can click like that all right so that checks out too let's be, uh, turn back to the seat iris aligned in seven minutes and all the messages disappeared uh, we check the status page ap1 and 2 in up auto throttle oh uh, that's fine those will clear out when we keep going uh, with the aircraft setup i think i've we uh, we don't want the right door uh, forward stairs aft stairs that's fine i just saw the doors page there okay they are all working now all right next thing is to start setting up our mcdu and we will be also using pilot to atc again but let's program the flight and then we will contact the atc and listen to the ADS and set our barometric pressure you can also get the barometric pressure from the tablet or efb so right now it is reading 1028 we'll set that for now and we will listen to the ADS to see if it's different that's set once and that's set twice if you don't set them or if you don't have the sync enabled you will get an ecam message uh, for the altitude uh, mismatch so that's the standby five six seven eight okay that's all set now we can jump into the mcdu we can also request the meta information but we have some things to do here too let's request that first weather request echo india delta whiskey we want the metar we'll send this message go back and we'll also request init data it'll take some time for this to populate and get from simbrief there we go we have the flight number and everything we need we can go back and check the messages for METAR and see if the QNH is matching. It is matching. We have few clouds at 2500. Winds are coming from 320 at 10 knots and the temperature is 15 degrees. We will need this information when we are calculating our performance. All right, we'll go to init page now. Init has two pages init A and init B. Init B can be only filled when your load sheet is final and when your passengers are completely boarded and your cargo and fuel is loaded we will fill the init a first by requesting the init that will connect to a cars and download it from simbrief our flight number is echo 
in the uh, November 565 host index for this flight which we can check from the tablet 15 and our cruising flight level is flight level 230 plug that information in this is normal this is a very short flight so that's fine let's clear these messages and then we'll request the wind information which is very handy with this aircraft to get everything from Simbri flight plan all right we have the winds now through the uplink and we can go to the flight plan page our departure that we are expecting from Dublin is and we'll check the fuel 6.16 and Leafy 6 Alpha is the departure and we'll go and check that in the MCDU departure runway 28 left is what we are expecting and we are departing from via the Leafy 6 Alpha departure and we have a Leafy transition but I'm not seeing it here. Oh, it is there. Okay. That's our departure. And that will take us to the correct places. It's already populated. And we have a direct approach to Manchester. Through Mercy. Direct to 23 right. So we will select that. Arrival. ILS 23 right. And no star. We have a direct insert this and we'll take a look at the flight plan routing to make sure we don't have any discontinuities we do have one that's where we expect vectors from the ATC I guess we will leave it in there for now and we can check it on our flight plan page so from Mercy aircraft does not know how to go to Charlie Foxtrot 23 right or Romeo but that will be vectors given by the ATC mm, wrong button we can also check one more thing uh, arrival we'll have ILS 23 right arrival ls23 right via mct okay now we can insert this that might fix the discontinuity it didn't but we can clear it ourselves and we'll see what the pilot atc will do when we get there now that that's now done we are waiting for the irs to align still but our flight plan routing is done we need to calculate our performance and fill out our init B page but we can't do that before our loading is complete let's see the mass and balance our filling is done so that means we can turn the passenger signs on that is now done and we can turn the fuel pumps on while we are here this is I believe an airline SOP some airlines turn them on on the ground very early some airlines wait before start so I turn them on you shouldn't see any white lights at the overhead if it's set up correctly all right we have to contact ATC get our uh, clearance we'll turn the constraints on looks like our uh, idea system is now aligned we can go to range 10 there we go and you will see some uh, delays and whatnot this is caused by the Phoenix app running in the background and consuming a lot of CPU power so that is why you see some delays 
Okay, waiting for the aircraft to load the passengers so that we can calculate uh, the performance. 104 passengers are on board now. And what we can do is we can go through the ECAM pages while we are waiting for the passengers to board. We'll check the engine page. And as you see, it's just delaying there, uh, coming from behind. That is due to the Phoenix app using a lot of CPU. I'm not happy with it. I hope they fix it in a future update. And I'm rendering the displays by my GPU, so it's not that it is rendered by the uh, CPU. All right, we have enough oil in the engines. We'll check the electrical page to make sure we have good power. You can also do a battery test here. I need to get a little bit closer to do that, to show you what I mean by that. So if I go to the overhead and disconnect or turn off one of the batteries and go back to the ECAM, you should see a battery amp increasing. If we turn it back on, now it should go back to charging. You see the amperage increasing. The battery is now charging itself. And that amps, we see amps over here. Same goes for battery 2. Turning battery 2 off, you'll see battery off message here. And the amps will be at 50. And if I turn it back on, you'll see it enters to a charging cycle. And the amps should increase from the transfer, transformer rectifier 1 into the battery. That's all good. Uh, next thing, we'll check the hydraulics page to make sure we have enough hydraulic fluid. We do. Those arrows are pointing to the levels. We'll check the fuel page to make sure we don't have any fuel imbalance and we have the expected fuel on board. And Cabin. Cockpit is burning right now. It's too hot. What we can do to mitigate the problem is to turn open the window and you'll see the cockpit temperature dropping when we started to get fresh air from outside. I hope I don't forget to close that window. Wheels, that's fine. And we will come back to the checks when we are ready to do flight control checks and whatnot. How are we doing here? 121 passengers, we can start the APU. Turn the master switch on, wait 3 seconds and turn the starter on. While APU is starting, that's I, I meant to show this to you. The magnetic interference from the APU is making the standby compass move, but I was too late to do that, so maybe in a future video. When the APU is available, we'll close the door and turn the packs to on. And you can also run the chrono to see if the APU starts at a reasonable time, watching your ND for the time that passed. We are seeing the EGT, APU should become available momentarily. Let's uncage the standby artificial horizon. Nice animation there. APU is almost there. Not quite there yet, but it is almost there. We should see the available message. Yep, APU is now available. We can turn the external power off. Wait a little bit for APU to stabilize and we can now then turn on the APU bleed. Let's close the window. And I'm, I'm curious to check one thing. Did the cabin temperature went up? It is going up, but not quite as fast, so that means it is not hard-coded, it is simulating. That's good to see. Alright, we'll turn the APU bleed on now. I don't know how many minutes you have to wait to do that. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, we will keep it on for now and keep providing fresh air to the cabin. We don't need the chrono anymore, we can get rid of that. And we'll go through the pre-flight checks. 
on the checklist cockpit preparations complete parking brake is set GPU is connected but we will disconnect that uh, batteries are auto signs are on lights are set crew oxygen is on fuel pumps are on generator 1 and 2 is showing fault that's fine we don't have engines running uh, cockpit cabin heat set packs 1 and 2 are on lights are set signs are on fire oxygen and caution tests completed we have completed the oxygen test briefly but it is working so no worries there uh, emergency exit lights are armed standby compass is on and cargo heat as required we set the MCD FMC we will set the altimeter again it's already set and fueling loading boarding will be completed momentarily and we will continue with the checks 143 passengers almost there in the meantime we can contact or listen to the 80s the frequency is 124.52 let's see what 80 what what 80 information is available to us Dublin International Information Romeo 190 Zulu winds are 322 at 10 knots visibility 6 miles 2500 feet clouds 25000 okay. scattered temperature 15 g.5 current qnh is 1028 all right Romeo that checks out runway 34 no runway 34 in use we'll see if we can get runway 28 left from the atc uh, that's interesting we will see about that all right what about the boarding almost there boarding is almost completed we are pretty much ready to do our performance calculations and request our ifr clearance from the atc we'll see a boarding completed message here very shortly last passenger is boarded and boarding is now complete now we can go and fill out our init B page zero fuel weight is 58.26 and zero fuel weight CG is 32.1 we'll go to init init B and zero fuel weight which I already forgot is 58.26 32.1 and 32.1 Lock fuel, we can check here, 6.15 and that's our init B page completed. Now we need to calculate our performance, we'll go to the departure performance calculator on our EFB, sync the load sheet, sync the winds and the live weather information. We will be departing runway 28 left at this point and we'll leave it here to see if the ATC will assign us the same runway let's contact the clearance delivery and request our clearance to make sure we are calculating the performance based on the runway that's assigned the frequency is 122.97 and the we will contact the ATC now Dublin delivery, Shamrock 565, re uh, request radio check. Shamrock 565, you are loud and clear. Alright. Shamrock 565, ready to copy IFR to Manchester. Shamrock 565, we don't have a flight plan. On That's my bad. Okay, I haven't filed the flight plan with them. Wait a second, guys. That will be sorted shortly. Shamrock 565, mm -hmm. ready to Kaipui, mm -hmm. IFR to Manchester. Shamrock 565 is clear to Echo Charlie Charlie. Fly the Liffey 6A departure with the Liffey transition, then as filed. Expect departure runway. 
Right, right to eight left. Right, left is given. Four thousand. We will set this and read it back. Squawk is three two one zero. So the QNH checks, we will set the ground frequency to 121 decimal 85. Or decimal 8. Okay, that's not decimal 85. 85. 121 decimal 8. And we'll stay on the ground frequency for pushback clearance. So everything checks out. We are given 28 left. That's fine. Uh, that doesn't match with the ADIS information. We plugged in our transponder code and set our stop altitude for tomorrow at 4,000 feet. We'll turn the stand transponder to stand uh, to auto now from standby, and we are ready to calculate our performance. We have all the information we need. Flaps will be one plus F, and we will calculate. 140, 140, 143, flaps 1 down 0 0.4, and flex temperature is 67. Alright, let's go to the performance, and we need to copy those numbers 140, 140, 143, and the rest 140, 140, 143. Didn't take the second one for zero. Flaps one down zero point four. Some people doesn't enter this. I'm not sure. I do enter, and the flex temperature is sixty seven, which gives us a clean flap speed of two fourteen. And this is blurry because I chose performance to render the displays due to having problems. Uh, that's why you are seeing the text a little bit blurry. So let's see here, 213, 215, that's, that's close, we will accept this. Alright, we are now ready to leave the gate, everything is done, we need to finish our preparations and ask for pushback and engine start clearance. Right, we are almost there guys, let's complete our preparations and ask for pushback clearance from ground frequency. Uh, everything is pretty much set. We'll put the flight plan on the co-pilot side and terrain radar there. Um, just checking to make sure everything is okay. Overhead looks fine. And we will be using the Phoenix pushback due to toolbar pushback causing some issues but we are we are done we are ready uh, we are ready to push back everything checks out we'll reset the rudder trim and call the tag and do our before start checklist all right let's go to the ground services and we need to disconnect the GPU and the chocks. Doors are still open. Are they? Yeah, doors are still open. Let's close the doors and connect the tug. We'll check the door page. All right, doors are closed now. We have 1800 PSI of oxygen which is plenty and we'll ask for
pushback clearance from ATC after the tarp is connected. At this point we'll turn the beacon light to on. We are about to start our engines. I'm not sure why taxi light moved there. Have to check that one later. Alright, looks like the tug is now connected. Let's contact the ground and ask for pushback clearance. Ground, Shamrock 565, ready for pushback and engine start. Shamrock 565, pushback and engine start approved. Alright. Pushback and engine start approved, Shamrock 565. That is fine. Now we can. Release the parking brake and be on our way. Alright, from now on the co-pilot will respond to the radios, that's what I was setting. Parking brake released. And we'll check the chart to make sure we are pushing into the right direction. So Dublin taxi chart is here. Oh that's Manchester. We'll pull the taxi chart for Dublin. There we are, we are departing runway 28 left, so we are going to push the tail to the left and request taxi clearance. Alright, we will start the pushback. And beacon light is on, fuel pumps are on, ignition mode selected to no ignites, and then we'll start with engine number 2. We are pushing. I have to watch for the turns. Let's turn now. It's hard. It's going to be hard to manage the taxi while trying to start the engines. We have N1 rotation, um, N2 rotation. We have ignition 2. EGT is rising, so that is looking good. We will start the timer now again for our fight. You can also start the chrono too if you want to. That is looking good. Let's push straight out and come to a stop. Alright, we can now set the parking brake and disconnect the tug. That is the pushback complete. We will do the after start checklist checks when we are done starting the engines. Looks like our right engine is almost there and it says available, we can continue with the left engine. We see N2 rotation, EGT, we should see oil pressure here, just a little bit, not too much, M1 rotation and oil pressure is increasing, we have EGT, so ignition, and that's a good engine start. There we go. We have a company message, which I know what it is. I am recording this part uh, in a different session, and that company message is the load sheet. We'll have to go and accept the load sheet again. As I restarted this flight, accept, return, and see what this one is. Yeah, okay, I don't know why it's sending twice, but that is okay. Alright, good engines start on both engines. Now we just go and turn the APU bleed off and APU master to off. Ignition mode selector goes back to normal. Uh, wing engine anti-ice is not required, probe heat is on auto, packs are on. We will set our flaps to take off flaps of flaps 1. Flaps 1 set and confirmed. Um, we will arm the speed brakes, auto brakes to max. And we'll take a look at the trim. Our trim setting is down 0 0.3. So this arrow is pointing to 0. We need to pull it a little bit down, like 1 thirds until 1. So that is about right so that's the takeoff trim 
and check the flight controls before starting our taxi all right full forward they need to move into these little white boxes center full back center full left center full right center right rudder center left rudder center flight controls are working and free uh, APU bleed is off, APU is off, engine instruments are checked and normal and that is after start check complete we will turn the nose light to taxi that is now set, we'll turn the runway turn off lights not that one We'll turn off lights to on and we are ready to request our taxi clearance from ATC. Shamrock 565 ready to taxi. Shamrock 565 taxi to runway 28 left via taxiways Alpha Tango 1, F Fountain, Foxtrot 3, Foxtrot 2, Foxtrot 1, Echo 1, hold short runway 34. Taxi to runway 28 left via taxiways Alpha Tango 1, F Outer. Foxtrot 3, Foxtrot 2, Foxtrot 1, Echo 1, hold short runway 3, 4, Shamrock 565. Alright, so Alpha Tango 1 is the one that takes us into Foxtrot 3. So that's saying Foxtrot 3, Foxtrot 2, Foxtrot 1, Echo 1, and hold short runway 3, 4. That is now confirmed and we are ready to taxi. So we we'll release the parking brake. Do the TO config check. That is now checked and working. And we are going to give the aircraft a little bit of throttle to get moving. Throttles back. And get on the taxiway. We go. It's telling us to maybe go off on the reverse side. No, we'll continue like this. We should be fine. Join this taxiway. And then we are going to make a left turn to join Foxtrot 3. We should see the markings on the ground or somewhere around here. So let's make this turn. This should be Foxtrot 3. Let's see if we can spot Foxtrot 3 right there. That's the correct one. Foxtrot 2, Foxtrot 1 and Echo 1 is our taxi routing. We have done the same taxi with the 146 before, so that is also the same routing and same runway for takeoff. So, Alright. We are jumping onto Foxtrot 2 now. And that is Dublin Airport, beautiful airport. I'd like to fly out right of out of Dublin. Alpha Tango 4. Okay. That was the side taxiway, Foxtrot 2. Foxtrot 1 is ahead. And then Echo 1. Okay. Foxtrot 1. That should be Echo 1 taking us into runway 28 left. We'll hold short momentarily, request departure clearance and do our final controls of takeoff configuration. And we should be okay and on our way. Let's gently put the brakes a little bit. Contact tower on 118.6. Have a good afternoon. Clear to cross runway 34 tower on 118.6 Shamrock 565. Okay. We are clear to cross runway 34 and jump on the tower frequency. 
the co-pilot will tune that frequency I will probably not have time to do that strobes are now going to come on let's see here that is the runway right in front of us we don't have takeoff clearance yet so we will keep the landing lights off for now but we will turn them on momentarily after takeoff clearance we should be tuned to tower frequency by now okay let's line up and call the tower for departure and that will be our final checks and we will be on our way we have a 4000 stop altitude until we pass a restriction constraints are now displayed so we should see that when we take off let's stop here check the frequency 118.6 that's the tower tower shamrock 565 ready for departure Squad code TARA and on. So TCAS is ready and we are ready to take off. Everything is checked. Speed brakes armed, flaps are set, radio trim is zero, landing lights are now coming on. And that is pretty much it. We are ready. We will increase the throttles to about 50% while holding the brakes for the engines to stabilize like that and when they are stable we will release the brakes engines are stable and we'll go flex all right manage flex 63 srs runway auto thrust blue Keep the center line. I have to apply a little bit left rudder to stay on the center line. A little bit of crosswind here. Right, we are coming up to V1 and rotate. Off we go. We'll follow the flight director Shepard here. Five, six, five, contact, on one, three, three, decimal, two, the rate gear is coming up. Throttles to lever climbed, it's flashing there. We are above the thrust reduction altitude. Now we can't, there is a hard restriction here. I have, flow, I have flown this before and I ran into problems with ATC, so we will wait. We will engage the autopilot. And that should be that everything should be taken care of by the autopilot. We are above the green S, that means flaps can come up now. Let's confirm flaps up, flaps are up, and we'll do the after takeoff checks. Alright, idle pilot is engaged, flaps are retracted, groin spoilers can be disarmed now. And Passing the transition altitude of 5000, we will switch to standard, but not for now. We can turn off the runway turn off lights and take the lights. Did we clear that restriction? Alright. 110. We'll select 110 and set that and the aircraft should start climbing right away yep 
Yeah, the aircraft is not good at maintaining the speed at these lower altitudes. I'm not sure why, but we should slow down shortly. That's a very steep climb. We'll switch to standard now on all the uh, altimeters. On 013 here. That's standard set. And we are climbing now. Alright, that is the flight or departure from uh, Dublin. And we are on our way. We don't need the terrain anymore and the constraints we don't need, we can put the airports on the captain's side and increase the range. Alright, the co-pilot is doing all that stuff for us now. Is he? Yep, he is. Coming up to 10,000. Alright, bending my are now coming off. We are cleared to 170. These things do happen with pilot to ATC. Time to time they repeat their instructions even if you acknowledged. But I am going to live with that. This is at least a better uh, solution than the Microsoft Flight Simulator's default Shamrock ATC. Five, six, five, contact Shannon Center on one three two decimal one five. Have a good afternoon. Center on one three two decimal one five. Shamrock five six five. Center Shamrock five six five. Climbing to flight level one seven zero. He is turning the radios, I guess. I'm hearing some clicks in the background. And everything looks okay. We'll go through the ECAM pages one more time to make sure everything is working. Engines are normal. Fleet system is normal, and we see the pressure readings. Uh, cabin pressure is increasing. Electrical system is looking okay. Hydraulic system is looking okay, and this is normal because landing gear is retracted and it's uh, using the green system, and some of that fluid or hydraulic oil is in the reservoir, and that arrow is pointing less than that green band because of that. Alright, fuel, no imbalance or no significant imbalance, this is normal. Fuel flow, fuel on board is checked, and we can check the fuel used and see our engine page should show it anyway um, we'll come back to that APU is off cabin temperatures are uh, normal and the cockpit temperature is normal doors are locked and slides are armed We are clear to our cruising altitude now. All right, builds are okay. Flight controls, we don't worry about those. And fuel used is 780. We departed with 6.15. So. 800 kilograms plus 5.3 so that's 6.1 that checks out so APU burned some fuel too so our fuel burn is normal and that is pretty much it check the status page nothing wrong there and that is checked done and 
uh, we are on our way when we reach cruise we'll do more checks and I'll bring you guys back when we are getting ready to descent which shouldn't be too far away We can check the progress page for information, so let's go and do the progress page. Uh, we can track a couple things here, we can track the runway, we can track the transition which is Manchester VOR, MCT, and that will display our distance to Manchester VOR. 118 miles or 118 miles to Manchester VOR, so that's a good... Uh, thing to have and we'll go to the progress page we are in climb now and we can also come in here and start filling out our approach page to do that we'll go to the co-pilot FMC and go into the ADSU AOC weather request and request weather at Manchester Co-pilot is taking care of the communications. Manchester information for uh, Manchester or weather information for Manchester. Winds are coming from 280 at 4 knots. Temperature 10 degrees, QNH 1037. So. 1027. Temperature is 10 and means 280 at 4 knots. Temperature 10 and means are 280 at 04 knots. I'm hearing an annoying click and I'm assuming that is our that should stop now. But oh, that's that clicking. Okay, I see now what's clicking. Okay, now it's fixed. I hope it doesn't. Oh no! Keeps clicking again. Okay, I hope it doesn't anymore. Um, approach configuration is done, except the minimums. We'll go and check the minimums by looking the chart. Let's pull the Manchester uh, approach chart. And take a look at this. Final approach course is 232, localizer is 10905, and the altitude for ILS is 449er. We will plug this in here 449er, and we'll go to the red map page. ILS frequency 109 or decimal 5, course is 231. And the glide slope is 3 degrees. 232, two, slight difference there, but we will live with it. That might be a nav data discrepancy, so we are not going to worry about that. Uh, transition flight level. Let's see if it's displayed here. Transition level by ATC, transition altitude 5000. So we'll wait ATC to tell us the QNH and then we will switch to standard parametric pressure when we hear the QNH from the ATC. That is everything for descent and approach programmed into the MCDU. Speed error at MCT. Let's see here. Okay, there's an amber warning here. The aircraft thinks it is not going to make that 185 speed restriction. And I am curious to see if it's a... Uh, if it's a hard restriction, it should be. Or is it a calculated restriction? Uh, 
Okay, so we'll we'll help the aircraft with speed brakes when we get there, and we'll follow the ATC's instructions. I'll bring you guys back when we are ready to reach the top of descent. Okay, we have received our approach clearance for ILS approach to runway 23 right with the MCT transition and we are getting close to our top of descent after Malud waiting for ATC to give us that information to us and uh, start our descent everything is pretty much uh, programmed now and we are ready to start our descent we forgot to relieve the passengers so let's relieve them a little bit and we can turn the uh, signs on when we are getting close to 10,000 again take a look at the descent checklist here in a little bit to make sure everything is uh, done as we are getting to top of descent arrival weather data obtained and set MCD approach page is completed radios are set engine ice anti-ice wing anti-ice not required uh, altimeters will be set after hearing from ATC approach is briefed we are going to descend down to let's take a look at the chart we are going to descend down to 3500 crossover MCT uh, and uh, on course 052 make a left turn to intercept course 232 into runway 23 right at Manchester our minimum sector altitude is 3500 from where we are approaching which we will be on a safe altitude airport elevation is 257 and runway elevation is 249 our missed approach we will climb to 3500 straight ahead until passing 750 feet or DME 0.3 from MCT and then turn right onto track 3 so F7. Alright, that's our descent cleans. Let's do that first. And continue with the briefing. On to track 357 and then we will come over uh, And we will be waiting for the ATC to direct us to a hold point if that happens. We'll keep the chart there. We are now descending. And if we need, uh, if we need to use the speed brakes, we will see a message on the uh, FMA uh, saying drag required or something uh, close to that. Let's see if there are any upcoming restrictions. The aircraft is now descending slowly until it reaches top of descent, because ATC gave us the descent instruction earlier than we expected, and that's why we are seeing 400 feet per minute descent right now, but when we pass the top of descent, it is gonna increase the descent rate we will see that happening very shortly after Malud you can check the progress page to see how much we got left to top of descent or uh, not performance page uh, we are on descent so that's fine We passed Malud, and as you see, our descent rate is now increasing to 
catch up to the uh, calculated profile. Beautiful. Everything played out fine, though uh, I am really uh, unhappy to record this at 1080p instead of 1440p due to the uh, CPU usage of Phoenix app running in the background. I am not able to record at 1440p. It introduces a lot of stutters, so sorry about that guys, but we will stick to 1080p 60 frames per second for this uh, recording. Let's jump back into the cockpit. Alright, that's where we expect to reach 16,000. And we should hear ATC giving us further clearances. We'll leave the communications to the co-pilot for now. And only thing we will probably communicate is going to be the establish on final. Or when we establish on final, we will contact the tower for landing clearance. I don't think the co-pilot does that automatically. Let's take a look at the fuel page again to make sure we don't have any imbalances and uh, check our gross weight. So 63 is our gross weight and our fuel is looking okay, no imbalance. Estimated fuel on board uh, at our destination is 4.6, right now we have 4.770, so that is closed, we don't have to make any changes to the gross weight. That's very minimal difference uh, the aircraft should compensate for that all right let's see uh, and hope that ATC will clear us further down but if I remember correctly from the other flight we should have a uh, altitude restriction on that arrival uh, which is I believe this chart let's pull this up and take a look yep we have oh we cleared those restrictions we need to be able to stand descent down further uh, we should be fine then let's see what the ATC will do when we reach 16,000 we should hear them clearing us further down Probably after Mercy, we will descend down further. Alright, we will wait on the ATC to tell us to descend again. Let's see what happens. We will, yep, we will turn on the passenger signs now and inform the cabin. And there is a good cabin view too, like this. Uh, it looks nice uh, to have a cabin and not worry about just a box to look through the window. Uh, all in all, I think this is a good aircraft, but it's just performance needs to be optimized a lot more. When compared to PMDG 737, this uses roughly 15 to 20 percent more CPU. We should hear the ATC shortly. Ill's approach, they don't say ILS. Let's see what the radar, radar, radar director says, otherwise we will start descending.
Right, we are clear for the approach, so we will descend down to 3500. There we go. And they shouldn't have any problems because we have our clearance. It's as you see, it says more drag because they didn't give us the instruction on time. We will use the speed brakes to slow us down a little bit and increase the descent and see if that will help. It still says more drag. Let's see. We probably need to go full uh, speed brakes to descend and catch up to the fly profile. These are the things that happens with pilot to ATC. Uh, you have to be very precise when you are calculating your descent rate and entering that into the flight planning uh, part uh, because that's what it bases off of your top of descent and if it's not calculated properly you will run into these issues and get stuck. That is the airport in front of us right there. We are coming down to 10,000. We will hope that we will meet that, uh, we will get to that speed or altitude before our approach. We are very close now and the aircraft needs to slow down and hopefully the speed brakes will help us slow down a little bit faster. It's trying to slow down to 250 before descending further. Let's see what, what happens. Speed brakes are fully out. If you go outside, you will see them. It's trying to slow us down. And oh, we are slowing down to 185. That's why we are not descending because of that speed restriction we have seen on the chart. But hopefully, we will get down on time. Yeah, you are a little bit late. You are a little bit late, my friend. We'll go flaps one. Flaps one confirmed, and that should help us with the descent. Let's calculate our descent performance very quickly. Arrival performance, or rather, uh, we are approaching runway two three. Dry conditions. Refresh the METAR, apply, and we will be landing with. Okay. Landing weight 63.0. I need to be a little bit faster. And there we go. So, medium brakes looks like fine we'll go and set the brakes to medium or the brakes medium uh, we will arm the spoilers when we know we don't need them we are pressing down below 10,000 let's turn on the landing lights and we can turn on the runway turn off lights too because we will be extending the landing gear momentarily are coming down nicely hopefully we will make it okay we can go flaps too to help the aircraft slow down and descent okay flaps two confirmed and we should get down a little bit faster now speed brakes are still out oh that's a nose dive for us The aircraft is trying to catch up to the profile and I can't blame it for it. So be aware of these issues guys. This is not intentional, this is just pilot to ATC waiting for descent clearance and whatnot. Hopefully we will uh, not have any problems. We are we are coming down very nicely, we should be fine. That's a very steep descent, the passengers are freaking out at the back, I, I'm pretty sure. But so be it, we need to make that uh, altitude uh, to arrive properly. 
and when we are making this turn we will activate the approach mode and you also need to do it here in the performance page activate approach phase confirm and that is now going to command the aircraft to slow down for approach and I hope I didn't screw anything by doing that a little bit early alright speed brakes are now coming in aircraft is trying to get down to the approach speed we are going to wait to drop the landing gear we started to make the turn now we need to descend a little bit more hopefully we will get there so is it a little bit windy? yes 19 uh, knots of crosswind it's shaking the aircraft a little bit so we are going to turn the landing system on on both sides put the VOR on our ND and go to landing system here to check and we will come back to this we are going to switch to standard now and the QNH is what was the QNH? 1027 and we have a master caution oh that's because of this 1027 and 1027 on the standby okay altimeters are now set so approach now course frequency checked flaps as required speed brakes are armed now approach mode we will arm now okay approach mode is armed glide slope we will wait for the glide slope to become alive that's the diamond you see here we still need to descend down to 3500 but looks like we are going to be fine after the turn we will, ex we will drop the landing gear and go the last stage of flaps and we are landing with flaps full approach speed is 137 landing speed is 132 that's verified and checked making that turn uh, glide slope and localizer armed altitude is also armed because we are not still at 3500 but we should get down there momentarily and ding the cabin I'm not sure if I'm hearing anything to get ready for landing but let's just not worry about it for now okay we are almost there just a little bit more Go around altitude is also 3500 so we don't have to set anything we just need to capture the glide slope just a little bit more come on aircraft you can do it you can do it we'll put the terrain on here and we are coming down to 3500 we should be fine We will call the ATC when we are established on final if they don't uh, contact us before. Alright, co-pilot will handle the radios. We are going to get very busy. We'll go flaps 3. Shamrock 
landing gear is coming down. Eels. Ah, uh, that's funny. Okay. Now we are 15 miles away from the airport. Landing gear is dropped a little bit early to reduce, increase the drag to get down to 3500. Altitude is almost captured. Localizer is captured. We are waiting for the glide slope and we will call the ATC for established on final. We made it to 3500. I was a little bit scared. It's warning us to go to flaps full. We are going to wait for 10 miles to the airport. Uh, and one thing I can quickly do here is go to the progress page and instead of this we can put Echo Golf Charlie Charlie 3 2 right and that's 13 miles distance that's on par with the VOR so runway is almost where the VOR station is I guess we are at 3500 finally made it down there okay we are reading the ILS here Brakes are set, spoilers armed, flaps, we will go full very shortly. Glide slope is alive, it's coming down, and we should capture the glide slope somewhere here at final fix 2 3 right. You see the diamond coming down now, we can switch to the landing system. And we have we have very powerful strong crosswind coming at 20 knots. I hope it will uh, lose its strength when we descend down and close to the runway for landing otherwise we might have to wait until the minimums to take control everything is looking fine 11 miles to the airport I knew I just did the uh, approach mode a little early I was like a bit worried that we will not make it down to 3500, but lesson learned, next time flying here I will be more careful. Glide slope is now captured, let's contact ATC. Shamrock 565 established on final. Alright, we are clear to land. It's saying winds are light, but I don't see it on my display, so not sure what's wrong there. Hopefully uh, it will help. We'll go flaps full now. And we are configured for landing. Full flaps confirmed. And after we la before landing check is complete. Right, hopefully the wind will lose its strength, that's what I'm looking for right now. Reading 35 frames per second at high-end settings with 3070 Ti using the Phoenix A320 and this is due to the Phoenix app using a lot of CPU in the background. Uh, the computer cannot process recording, rendering the flight simulator and uh, running the Phoenix app in the background. Um, Looks like I need a more powerful CPU if I want to record Phoenix at a higher resolution or higher graphics settings. But this is also fine too, we will live with this. Not a huge deal. Alright, checking the puppies, they are looking fine. Uh, we are a little bit... oh... I'm a little bit worried about the wind. This looks like it's going to be a, a crosswind landing. There we are, approaching. I like the liveries of uh, Aer Lingus. They look beautiful on an aircraft. 
Alright guys, if you own the Phoenix and completed a couple flights, let me know in the comments how your experience is with the Phoenix app in the running in the background and how much CPU it's using and what's your graphics settings uh, with your GPU and were you able to run this smoothly. I am curious to learn from others to see what others are experiencing with the Phoenix app running in the background. Okay, means are losing their strength. We are down to 10 knots. That's that's lucky. And runway is ahead of us. We will just wait a little bit more until 10,000. 1,000. 1,000 is checked. And we will disconnect the autopilot and hopefully land without any issues. We are still shaking a little bit. 5 knots. I think now I can take control. Autopilot disconnected. That might land now. I'm just following the puppies to stay on the profile and get down. Looking nice. Five hundred. Just maintaining the center line. I'm seeing slight stutters if I'm not mistaken. And just purely following the puppies. We are off to the left a little bit, looks like, according to the above. display. So we'll correct ourselves. And we might do a side slip. Minimum. Minimums continue. We are landing. It's almost 100. there. Flight slow. 40, 30, 20, retard. Vertals are closed. And touchdown. Reversers are activated. We are using idle reverse only. 60 knights, nuts. Reversers closed. And let's see. We will vacate to the right and keep going. Even the medium auto brakes was a little bit too much, but we'll keep going. I should have tapped the brakes to disconnect the auto brakes and keep rolling down the runway. When we clear, oh, our co-pilot should get back to the ATC saying we are clear uh, of the active runway. Now we can bring the flaps in and disarm the spoilers and slow down a little bit oops that right click bug is still there All right, let's slow down and we need to stop and request taxi to the gates shamrock 565 is clear of active Okay, we will contact ground now for taxi. Landing lights are now coming off. And nose wheel is going to taxi. Runway turn off lights will stay. Strobe is going to auto. Transponder back to auto. And that is pretty much it. Let's see the frequency 121.85. That's tuned for ground. Grand, good afternoon. Shamrock 565 request taxi to the, to the gates. Grand is not responding. Let's try one more time. With the co pilot. Shamrock 565 request taxi to the gate. This happened multiple times with pilot to ATC. Um, not sure if they don't have the gates in the database for Manchester, which uh, would be odd. 
but we will keep going guys we'll find that parking spot we are not going to worry about that it would have been nicer to receive that information from uh, ATC but this happened with the 737 last time as well so we'll keep going we'll pull the taxi chart here for Manchester and we'll find ourselves a parking spot We'll try multiple times again to see if they are going to give us a taxi routing. I doubt they will, but we will try our chances one more time. That's the terminal building. Let's try it again. Shamrock 565 request taxi to the gates. No response. Alright, let's see where we can go. We are on Alpha, we'll follow Alpha, Alpha 4, Charlie, Papa, and then go to Pier B. That's the plan. A little bit more trouble. Light directors can come off. We can start the APU now to get ready at the gate. One, two, three seconds. There we go. And we will join Alpha. Looking good. And we will continue this all the way to the gates. We don't need the terrain anymore. Brakes are hot. Brake fan is now working. We are not going to do a turnaround, so that's fine. It will cool down when we are at the gate. I intentionally didn't turn on the weather radar by knowing it's not working, but before departure that is what you need to do and put it on system 1 if you want to, but there, it will not make no difference so I just didn't bother with that. We are coming up to Charlie and from Charlie we'll go straight into Papa and maybe just go to Lima 1 and park somewhere here or we can go to Pier A not sure which gate is used by uh, Aer Lingus but that is Papa and I am just tempted to go this way turn around and follow along here on Kilo to the gate You probably can find the gate somewhere there in front of us next to these big boys looks like those are all the heavy aircraft gates but we will we will be fine I guess I'm not gonna fiddle around to find another gate and keep you guys here watching me taxiing in Manchester we'll just follow here slow the aircraft down and find ourselves a parking spot somewhere here on our left see an empty gate next to this Viz Air behind that truck, so we will aim for that. That is 4-4. Four, four. I think that's this one here. 4-4. Four, four. Oh, that's 4-3. Alright, we will park here. Let's turn the taxi light off and runway turn off lights off. We don't want to blind this guy. And this might be our gate too, luckily. I see some marshallers there, so maybe that's where we meant to park yeah look at that we have a marshaller we got lucky this time We'll stop here. Gate is coming. Parking brake is set. Clear the master caution. Clear the warnings. That should be displayed on the status page. That's okay. And it's the right brakes. They are still hot. And we are ready to shut down the engines.
So APU is running, APU bleed can come on now and we will shut the engines down. Wait for the engines to spool below 20% N2 and we will turn off the beacon and open the door. Our door is already open. Our beacon light is now coming off. Stroke can come off too. And we can turn off the passenger signs and let the passengers out. Alright, so let's go to the tablet. Why the board? Why the door? What happened to the gate? Did I close the door? That is interesting. Yeah, the door is closed. Okay, let's see. We'll connect the gate like this. That should do it. They look like the Microsoft Flight Simulator and Phoenix is not communicating good enough. But there we go. Now that's better. Okay, so the doors are open, the board, and I don't know if we can speed up the boarding. Started. Yeah, let's do this. Let's put the aft stairs. Open the door. Open the cargo compartments. And let's hope they will deboard the aircraft. Oh yeah, they are. There we go. Very nice. Let's take a look. Fuel pumps can now come off. We don't need them anymore. Uh, we'll keep the emergency exit lights armed until the passengers are deboarded. Nail lights will stay on for now. Uh, packs are running. Crew oxygen supply, we don't need it anymore. We can turn the cockpit voice recorder on again. While we are waiting here, this is the last flight of the day, so we can turn off the adhere system, go down, reset the rudder trim, I don't know how that happened, and unlock the cockpit door, and we can indeed open the door. If I can turn around a little bit more, we should be able to open the door. There we go. And final things. We'll switch this to 100. Okay. Heading goes to 000. That still goes to 100. That is all done. We'll turn that off too. We'll turn that off too. And we'll set the QNH to standard before leaving the aircraft. Same here too. There we go. And we can get rid of the doors page here. Go to our menu and waiting for the passengers to leave the aircraft. So cargo is unloaded. Passengers are leaving. We can close the cargo doors. Oh, they are opening them back up. Why? Okay, anyway, don't uh, never mind me. That's fine. All the passengers are almost left the aircraft. You see the marks here and the CG changing as they leave. And attaching the aft stairs is going to speed up this process because they will be leaving from the rear gate or rear door. Okay, the passengers are deboarded now. We should see the cargo doors closing, which they are. And that is the flight completed, guys. So, 
we'll turn the APU off APU bleed is coming off APU master is coming off nav and logo lights are coming off now and we will turn off the battery power when the APU spools down the displays will go black you can reset the clock 1 hour 4 minutes and chrono 2 Our PU takes a little bit time to spool down. Uh, you'll see it here. It's still not turned off yet. Did I turn it off? Yes, I did. Are we on ground power? No. Okay, now see if the APU will spool down and turn off. APU bleed is not there, APU is available, so it might take some time. APU gen is not generate. it's still generating some voltage, so I'm not sure it says available, but it should go down. Let's not worry about that, ground power off, and we'll turn off the batteries. And the aircraft should shut itself down, if I'm not mistaken. Oh no, hold on, let's not do that. There is a company message, and that is because we arrived to our destination. Let's do that too, and let's just make this a complete flight arrival message. Yep, that's fine. Okay. Looks like all done. Why APU is not turning off? That is interesting. How long it takes for the APU to cool down and shut down? Don't think it... Oh, there it is. It's gone now. Okay. Mm, there is a cool off, I guess. APU is gone. External power is turned off. And batteries are now turned off. And that is the flight completed guys, thanks for being here with me, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, hit that like button for me please, that helps a lot. And I will be seeing you in the next video, thanks for following along.